Hello. So I'm going to uh, present you how to converge ultra low power and uh, performance MCU requirements. My name is uh, Bertrand Denis. I'm product manager for STM32 L4. So I'm, co I'm going to, to explain you the ultra low power and uh, performance dilemma. Then how to select uh, MCU. And finally, the STM32 L4 uh, answer. So what are the, the main requests uh, for the MCU? So first one is uh, obviously more, more and more memory size due to uh, stack communication. So uh, more and more stack to be embedded in the MCU. Second point is regarding security and crypto, crypto algorithm, more and more security are required. Third point is the application, more and more complex, which leads to, uh, to increase the memory size request. On top of that, more and more performance. The customer needs a reactive application, read time constraints, and also more DSP and FPU uh, requests. Example about metering and sensor application. And all with that with uh, less, power, less power consumption requirement for both, both needs. So either increase the battery lifetime and also reduce the battery size more and more ecological and green requests, and energy investing, and the need to remove the peak power in order to use very small battery. So what are, which kind of, uh, of applications need these this three requests? So more performance, less memory, and uh, uh, less power, sorry, and more memory. So uh, here are some examples. So application regarding fitness, healthcare, or regarting sensorub, sensorub, all the algorithm known in the market, you need DSP instructions and floating point unit to be more efficient. Audio accessories, you, uh, you have a request regarding uh, more stacks, but also as well less power consumption. Industrial automation, home automation, same story, more stack, more, more performance required, and at the same time to reduce the power consumption, and all portable and healthcare application. So, so next question is how to select the MCU based on these three parameters. So regarding more memory size, so First question is internal or external? External, external there is of course a penalty in terms of uh, power consumption because you have to toggle the I.O. externally, etc. Regarding the performance to select your NCMU, well, it's quite easy. So based on the, the core map of drive some MIPS value. And also you need to, to take care about do you need a DSP extraction of floating point in it? And the last thing is regarding the, the power consumption, but it's very difficult to compare a product to another based on the data sheet, because the, the low power modes are different from uh, a product to another. And then finally, how combine this request? So I have a question for you. How do you think you can benchmark the power efficiency of an MCU? Do you know? Yeah. So the, the first answer, which is the best one, is to implement your real application in your, in, in your system. Okay, so you, you, you try several MCU and you benchmark what is the power consumption of the MCU. That's efficient because it's really the, it's, it's really the reality, but it's really time constraint. Because 
normally you don't, you cannot afford to, to port your, your application to several MCU. Then another possibility is a data sheet comparison. So you can compare data sheets. But again, it's difficult because low power modes from one MCU to another are different. And secondly, it can be biased. For example, in active mode, if you run your software with a wild one, with a core mark, or with a Fibonacci, or whatever, the power consumption will be different. If you run out of internal flash, internal SRAP, it is difficult. So we, you have two possibilities, but one is quite time constraints. The other, well, very difficult to compare. So another solution is to use the ULP bench from MMBC. Uh, this bench provides a reliable and fair way to measure the MCU efficiency. So it compares the MCU for a score, the higher the better. The ULP bench show is a working group with all semiconductors manufacturers to define the bench. So it's a really an industry standard methodology. So now I'm going to, to explain you how it works. So in fact, the MCU must be programmed to wake up each second. And uh, each second, the MCU executes twice a workload, so with several mathematical operations. And after 10 cycle of benchmark, there is an average of energy which is measured. And the score is 1,000 divided by the energy per cycle. So now, let's have a look how to, to measure it. So to measure the, the you need to have, a, to use a energy monitor board, so it's a specific board. It's, uh, this board uh, injects 3 volt and measures the current in the different, uh, during the different cycles. This energy monitor board is connected to a PC and there is a software running on the PC which integrates the measurements and plot the total energy versus the time. And then it shows a score. Again, the higher the better. So now let's have a look on the, on the results. OK, so you can see that there are several, several measurements done on several uh, MCU. So the, the best score is obtained by uh, STM32L4 with a score of 123. So it is the best in class in ultra low power bench score. But now let's add the performance dimension. So again, performance dimension, which can be used is the core mark. And then if you add the core mark, so the performance dimension, you can see that the STM32L4 really blows away the competition of ultra low power and you get 273 in core mark. So you have the best in class in terms of ultra low power, plus you have a lot of performance. So how, how is it possible? So it's the STM32L4 embeds a lot of uh, innovation. First one is uh, uh, there, we added uh, a new a new shutdown mode. So this shutdown mode you can go down to 30 nanoamps, but it's not only a mode on which you you can wake up only for, with reset pin. You can wake up for IOs, and in this mode also, the RTC can run. So the RTC is available in all low power modes, including shutdown. We also introduce the VBAT mode, so when, the, when, you, when you use an external capacitor or a backup battery, when the mains supply goes down, 
then there is an automatic switch internal to a, to a device and you keep the RTC and backup register. And with this mode, you get four nanoamps. Also, possibility to have USB without the need to have a dedicated crystal for the USB. So, bomb reduction. Also, we introduced a new internal insulator programmable from 100 kilohertz to 48 megahertz. And this oscillator can be very accurate. Maximum plus minus 0.25% because this uh, internal oscillator is automatically calibrated by the 32 kHz crystal. Also, the I.O. level is kept in all modes. So, for example, you said this I.O. I want it a pull up or pull down or whatever. And this level is kept in all low power modes, but also kept during the wake up phase. You can wake up from a lot of source, so especially communication peripherals, analog peripherals, for example, in low power modes. We also we introduce a new mode where you can keep 32 kilobytes of SRAM out of 128 kilobytes of SRAM. And also you have separate VDD supplies. So very useful, for example, when you want to add to connect external peripherals, let's say, for example, an LCD working at 3 volts, whereas all your system is at 1.8 volts. It enables to remove the need for an external level shifter. So all of this, again, to optimize and reduce the power consumption and high flexibility to the users. So now let's have a look on ultra low power modes available. So again, we have VBAT at 4 nanoamps and 300 nanoamps with our RTC. We have shutdown at 30 nanoamps and 300 nanoamps with our RTC. So wake up sources, uh, 5 IOs or RTC. And wake up time is quite short, 250 microseconds. But if you want to have a, a lower wake up time, there is now standby. So 14 microseconds. And again, in this mode, you can keep 32 kilobytes of SRAM. Now, in addition to the five IOs and RTC, you can wake up from the burnout reset and the watchdog as well. But if you want to keep all your peripherals or your SRAM, there is a stop two. So the power consumption is now 1.1 microamps, and you wake up in less than five microseconds. And now with the wake up source, you have all the IOs, but also power voltage detector, LCD, comparator, I2C, UART, low power timer, so more, much more uh, wake up sources. And you keep all your SRAM. Then stop one, which is similar to uh, stop two, but you can wake up from any SQRC and any UART. Also, the wake up, wake up time is slightly lower, four microseconds instead of five. Sleep mode, so uh, you can wake up from any interrupt and any event at 40, 35 microns per megahertz. And then two run mode, up to 24 megahertz at 100 microns per megahertz, and at 80 megahertz at 112 microns per megahertz. Okay, so now I have some questions for you. If you want to win uh, Discovery Kit F0, the well, first question is, uh, what is uh, the power consumption in shutdown mode in the STM32L4 without RTC? 30. 30. Yes, correct, 30 nano. Um, second question, what is the wake-up time uh, from uh, stop two in the STM32L4? 
Right. Correct. Okay, let's let's go on. So in addition to power consumption, it's also very important to wake up very efficiently. So without peak power and also uh, very fast and e efficient run. So in VSTM 32L4, you can go from stop mode and run at 48 megahertz in less than five microseconds thanks to the internal oscillator, but you can program from 100 kHz up to 48 megahertz. And if you want to get the maximum performance, so running at 80 megahertz, you just add, need to add 15 microseconds, which is really the best in class in terms of startup time. And again, it's from stop mode, but if you want to, to go from standby, you just add to need nine microseconds. Also, the STM32L4, so it's really combined, again, the ultra low power and the performance. And it, it is shown here, so you don't compromise on performance, so it's a Cortex-M4 with, with protein point in it, and this instruction, so reaching 100 drives from MIPS and 273 core mark. Oh, sorry. But it, it's not all, also optimized DMA and uh, very fast peripherals, so SPI up to 40 megabit per second and user at 10 megabit per second. Also, a lot of, in of integration. So in terms of memory, one megabyte of flash, 128 kilobytes of SRAM, again, to answer to the main trends of the market to have more and more memory. One thing to notice is that the, the flash is dual bank. It means that you can execute out of one bank and program the other one. Very useful. Oh, sorry, I don't know why. This was... And in addition to that, so uh, there are a lot of connectivity, so USB on the go, SD, SDIO, MMC, I2C, CAN, Quad SPI, UART, etc. Also a lot of crypto, so something that you cannot do, for example, in, uh, in software, you can have the crypto directly here in hardware. Yes. Uh, parallel interface, FSMC, to, to connect uh, uh, Memo, uh, parallel flash or SRAM and also uh, segmented CD, a lot of timers and analog. So, and in a package down to 4.4 4 per 3.8 millimeter. So, again, a high integration. So, in conclusion, the STM32L4 uh, is an ultra low power leader and performance booster. So, it really combines the two worlds. So it is the excellence of ultra low power, plus it adds a performance dimension to this, this ultra low power world. Then it adds a lot of uh, innovation, as I showed to you. So there are a lot of uh, new innovation in this product, both in architecture and also in peripheral. And integration, a lot of memory, up to one megabyte of flash, 128 kilobyte of SRAM. And, uh, and a lot of, uh, of smart peripherals also embedded. Okay, so I invite you to go and uh, have a look on the STM32L4 demo. So it's a, it's a wheel of chance. So in fact, it's a, it uses a Nucleo uh, with a, a Bluetooth Low Energy Shield in conjunction also with uh, microphone MEMS. And uh, all of this is just powered by a small cone battery. And the STM32L4 does voice recognition. So it, co it recognizes the sentence. When you recognize the sentence, it sends it to a tablet. And the tablets launch a, a wheel of chance, and you can win a power bank or a nuclear bolt. So it really shows, again, uh, the power efficiency, because it can run through a very small cone cell. 
and performance because to do voice recognition you need uh, quite a big amount of, of uh, performance and also uh, I engage you to, to, to show the demo using the STM32L0 which is uh, a low cost version of uh, ultra low power STM32 and also STM32L1 which is the, the, the wide choices of uh, STM32 in terms of ultra low power and you can play and uh, have a look of all the low power modes across the, these, two, these two products.